Hey, this is Mike from The Run Testers. This is the Garmin Phoenix 7 Pro. And in this video, we're gonna give you some very early thoughts on the new Phoenix model. First, we'll get into the key differences between this and the Phoenix 7. And then we'll get you into some initial thoughts on how we've got on so far with the Garmin Phoenix 7 Pro. Okay, so let's drill down into today's key design elements and how the 7 Pro compares to the non-Pro Phoenix 7. Now, the first thing to mention, obviously, is that it's coming in the same case sizes. You're also getting the option of solar and non-solar options here as well. You're also getting the option of titanium or stainless steel bezels. And obviously, depending on what combination you go for, that is gonna vary the price that you can expect to pay here. Now, in terms of other things like weight, Thickness is exactly the same as it was on that kind of top end Phoenix 7 model for, you know, that corresponds with the Pro version. So from that point of view, nothing's really changed. Now on the screen side of things, you are getting the same size screen and resolution across the board. But Garmin says it has used an improved memory and pixel display on the uh, 7 Pro model. It hasn't really specified how that imp uh, has kind of you know improved on it but ultimately you are going to see or should see on paper an upgraded kind of performance on that screen in terms of other things we need to mention here as well you're getting the same kind of layout on buttons similar uh, kind of um, designs on the straps as well as the same waterproofing same level of connectivity as well here too now a couple of things to kind of mention that i think kind of stand out from a new point of view you are getting a very different heart rate sensor on these watches now we'll show a little bit closely but you can see that very these two optical sensors look very very differently when you compare it to the series 7. now ultimately what garmin is saying here is that this optical heart rate sensor is better designed along with its own kind of algorithms to detect heart rate or improve heart rate accuracy for particular kind of sports tracking activity so hopefully on paper, it should see an improvement in terms of running. Other things to kind of mention, you are now getting an LED flashlight on all of the options, the size options. Before, it was just on the 7X. Now you have that LED flashlight across the board. And it does feel, uh, you know, in terms of early play, that is a little bit brighter than the one on the 7X as well too. Other things to kind of mention, that Garmin is now adding a kind of redshift mode, which we haven't been able to kind of find on the watch itself, but ultimately it's the ability to kind of change the display color to ultimately let it, let it be an easy display to view at night and not be so intrusive when you're kind of maybe using it at night time where you want to track sleep and kind of similar kind of circumstances scenarios like that so those are the real key differences between the 7 pro and the series 7. i'd say a lot is very similar in terms of the the key dimensions the size of the screen the weight the thickness but you're getting that led flashlight across all watches you're getting that red shift mode as well for that kind of display extra display mode as well you are getting that new heart rate uh, sensor as well and you are also getting an improved memory and pixel display on the 7 pro 2. Okay, so let's get into the software features. Now, what we do know is that Garmin has told us that the software features that are unique to the Phoenix 7 Pro right now will be rolled out to the Phoenix 7 and also to the Epix Gen 2. So these aren't gonna be features that are gonna be unique to the Pro forever. And we don't know when they'll roll out to the older watches, but we do know they will be coming. So what exactly are you gonna see that's new on the Phoenix 7 Pro series? Let's have a look. So first up is something called endurance score. So what is endurance score essentially? Well, Garmin is using short and long-term training load data to measure how easy it is to sustain prolonged efforts. So basically what this feature is designed for is for endurance athletes, for ultra runners, anyone that wants to know or get a better sense of how well they can hold or handle that kind of more intense level of activity. Next up is something called Hill School, which might be more appealing to a lot more people. This is Garmin's way or promise to measure how easy it is to run up hills, and it's using stats like VO2 max and training history to define that Hill School. Now, the other big area where we are seeing some new features on the Phoenix 7 Pro are around mapping. And now we've talked a lot about Garmin's mapping support over the years, and we, we kind of still believe it is the best support in terms of mapping out there on a watch. So what else are you getting on the Phoenix 7 Pro that will come to the older Phoenix 7, but you will only get on the Pro right now. Let's have a look. 
So first up is a more running centric version of up ahead, which we have seen on Garmin watches before. And this will let you see points of interest, checkpoints like aid stations on your maps. There's also weather map overlays. So this is a feature that will allow you to view upcoming weather conditions on your maps on your watch. So ultimately, this is a feature that will ultimately help you decide or dictate whether you maybe need to change equipment, change kit. That's what that kind of weather map overlays is hoping it can deliver for you. And that really feels like the key software features that we've kind of seen talked about for the Phoenix 7 Pro. As mentioned, these are features that are going to come to the older Phoenix 7, so they'll be unique to the 7 Pro for a while, but will come to the older watches. We just don't know when as of yet. And of course, we have to talk about battery life because if you are looking at a Phoenix watch, you are probably pretty concerned about what kind of battery life you're going to get from this watch. Now, we've had a look at the numbers and compared how the Phoenix 7 Pro models compare to the Phoenix 7 series models. And ultimately the numbers that Garmin provides suggest that you're gonna get identical performance in terms of that battery. Whether that's in solar or non-solar power uh, kind of modes that, or models, that's ultimately what we're gonna get. It's gonna be exactly the same. You've got the same kind of power manager modes to you know, make sure you can tweak how that battery kind of performs and making sure you're using the right features. But in terms of what Garmin has stated, the numbers for the Phoenix 7 Pro battery life wise is going to be exactly the same as what you're going to get on the Phoenix 7 series as well. So the Phoenix 7 Pro was a little bit of a surprise to me. It feels like the Enduro 2 that came out last year was already kind of a Phoenix 7 Pro, but it is an interesting new watch that has some useful new features. And I think for me, the thing that's been the most exciting feature about it so far has been the new heart rate sensor. So I've done eight runs, a bike ride, and some strength and yoga sessions with the watch. And for the most part, it's been great on accuracy. That's on GPS, which you expect. You know, the multiband accuracy on Garmin watches is as good as it gets, I'd say, on the market at the moment. And it's that's very much the case on the Phoenix 7 Pro. But with the heart rate accuracy, I'm very rarely a fan of optical heart rate monitors. I nearly always link up a chest strap eventually with a watch to get accurate data. But so far, the Phoenix 7 Pro's heart rate sensor has been pretty much spot on in all my runs. Uh, even when I'm doing like little surges, uphills and that kind of thing, you might get a little bit of lag behind a chest strap, but not really noticeable unless you're glancing at your watch at the whole time. So and you get a good graph afterwards that does match up really well with a chest strap heart rate sensor. So obviously big caveats here is I've only done eight runs and it's been warm conditions, which generally helps optical heart rate sensors in terms of performance. But I've been really impressed with the heart rate tracking so far. Maybe these watches and the new Ethics Pro watches will finally allow you to ditch things like chest straps and get very accurate optical heart rate performance. Still a little bit skeptical over the long term. I'm still waiting for one run where it goes completely wrong, but so far, fair play, it hasn't happened. Heart rate sensor has been really good. Other new stuff, it's good to have the flashlight across all sizes. Um, I use it occasionally, but I'm sure there are lots of people who use it a lot more than me in, who are outside in the dark more often than me. I don't like going out in the dark. It's scary in the dark, even if you've got a watch on your wrist with a flashlight on it. Hill and endurance score, I think will be interesting once they've been enabled. Like I've had the watch for almost 14 days ahead of launch, but not long enough to actually get those features enabled on my, um, on my Phoenix 7 Pro. So, you know, I think it'll be an interesting idea. It'll be a nice score to track. The endurance score taking in all different kinds of activities is interesting. And I do like the Hill score as someone who's about to start training for the first ultra, the idea of having these scores on the watch and being able to track, you know, the score over time, I think is quite handy, even if the actual numbers themselves might be a little bit you know, arbitrary, being able to track the trend in them will be useful once it's all up and running. We'll talk more about them in our full review. Battery life has lived up to its billing for sure. Like I'm now at 59% and I've had the watch running for, like I say, almost, uh, I think 12 days, something like that. And, uh, you know, it's had little top ups along the way because I've been plugging it into my computer to manually transfer activities across and get routes on there. But it's going to last what Garmin says it's going to last. I did a hour and a half run with it in multiband mode and it dropped 4%. So that works out almost exactly what Garmin says the multiband um, battery life will be. So those numbers, you can look at them and they're pretty good numbers across the board. It's a very uh, long lasting watch. Not as long lasting as the Enduro 2, but you know, right up there uh, with anything else on the market really. So a week with the Garmin Phoenix 7 Pro. This is the 7S, it's the 42 millimeter version. And I think if I put them face side by side with the Phoenix 7, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference. They look pretty much identical until you notice this one little thing on the top. This is the flashlight. And I think we'll probably all mention the flashlight and it, you're probably a bit like, why are you talking about flashlights and running watches? Why does it matter? I think for me, I thought that when they launched this Phoenix 7 line and the 7X had the flashlight, I was like, that is such a cool feature. I really want that feature. 
but the watch is too big. But I love the idea of a flashlight and a watch. I think as a runner, a female runner who runs alone a lot in the winter, I go out dressed like a Christmas tree. I've got clip on lights just about everywhere. I'm wearing reflective clothing. It makes me feel safer if I know that I'm seen by cars. And this isn't just a flashlight. When you, it's got kind of cadence settings. So when you run, it changes color as you move. It's got different kind of, you can have it as a strobe, as a flashing. There's an SOS light on there. I think it's a really clever feature. And as a female runner, I'm really pleased it's on there. We always hope not to have to use things like an SOS flashlight, but knowing it's there, I think it's cool. And it's now available on all of the Phoenix 7 Pro line. So that I'm really pleased with. The new heart rate monitor, I have tested it with a chest strap, found it pretty much spot on, but I think Garmin have made a big deal about saying it's a heart rate monitor, it's gonna do improved kind of heart rate on multi-sport, so like other sport modes. So I need to get in the pool with it, I need to get on a bike with it, wearing my chest strap, wearing this, and doing some more testing in that. We're all probably gonna say, We've not had a chance to test it for the hill score or the endurance score because there's just not enough data. We need to have the watches on for two weeks. So I've not got anything to say on that. The two things I would say that are not at all negatives, but I have noticed. When I've been testing the Epix Pro, the Forerunner 965, the Forerunner 265, they've all got that really bright AMOLED screen. And I think when you go back to the Phoenix line, you do notice it's not as bright. You can still definitely, definitely, definitely see it. But I think if you're expecting a really bright screen, like maybe an Apple Watch, you're gonna find this quite dull. And I think now that we're seeing the AMOLED screen more and more and more throughout the Garmin line, it does feel a bit, a bit, not dull, but it just feels different. That said, it's got a much longer battery life because it's got the solar power. I've had this for about a week. I've probably done, it's on smartwatch mode, and I've done at least about three hours a day of activity. I walk the dog for two hours a day and then I've done either a run or a workout or something as well each day. And I'm still on about 30% battery life. I haven't charged it since I got it. So do you mean that's, that is amazing. You could easily go away for a marathon abroad and not have to worry about charging this watch. I do, I'm looking forward to doing a lot more testing with it. I do wish we'd seen skin temperature from Garmin, I think. Apple are doing it, Aura are doing it. Do you mean every watch is doing it for, as a female, for doing kind of cycle tracking? I was hoping we'd see that from Garmin. We're still not, you can still, you can still track your periods on the Garmin, but you have to do it kind of manually through the app. I thought it would be coming. Maybe it is with the Phoenix A, but it's not here with the Phoenix Pro. But yeah, apart from that, it feels very much like a Phoenix. Obviously all the running, the new advanced running features are gonna be on the older Phoenixes. So really it's a different heart rate monitor and a flashlight. How much th those two things matter to you will completely depend on how you feel about both of them. But it still feels like a Phoenix and I'm looking forward to doing more testing with it. But they're my initial thoughts after about a week testing. So in the brief time that I've been testing the Phoenix 7 Pro, I've put this through a bunch of different tests. I've done a two hour long slow run I've done a 5K sort of steady. I've done some hill training. I've done a treadmill test. I've also done some walking. I'm training for the Comrades, so there's gonna be a bit of a run walk strategy for that. So I've done a bunch of kind of um, two mile walks with it as well. I've also been in the sauna as part of my Comrades training, doing some heat training. So I've used that opportunity to check out some of the heart rate data as well. But yeah, it's been a brief amount of time, done a bunch of tests. And so I'm gonna to stick to some of the things that I can sort of tell you in terms of the accuracy of the GPS and heart rate. But first up, a quick word on design. I mean, this is a Phoenix, <laughs> looks like a Phoenix, behaves like a Phoenix, it's rugged, it's well-built. Screen performance, I think that's kind of on par with an Enduro 2 or the old Phoenixes. It's not the brightest, it's not gonna be that AMOLED Christmas that you might get with the Epix, but it does a perfectly good job. I think it's perfectly readable, the screen's nice and big, all of those things. It feels rugged, it feels well-built. The only thing I'm not really keen on, it's ships, with these um, silicone straps, they're kind of quick release silicone straps, you can change them out. But I find that silicone strap now having used a nylon pretty uncomfortable. And on the first night that I wore this, it actually gave me some really quite serious silicone burn on the arm. I had to switch wrists with it because of that. I also found with that strap that I have to adjust it quite a lot between when I'm running, where I want that kind of tightness to keep the heart rate monitor in place. You know, and the weight of it can move around if you haven't got it strapped tight. And then you want to kind of loosen it off after the run. So you end up having to do this kind of adjustments. I find that a little bit annoying. I don't get that with the nylon straps and I much prefer the nylon strap that you get on something like the Enduro 2. But otherwise, you know, yeah, it, 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 there's not really much changed here in terms of the overall kind of sort of build quality from the Phoenix. You're going to get what you expect. So a quick word on battery life then. 
I've been wearing this for about six days. In that time, it's burned just around kind of a third of its life. So 32% battery has gone. The general, that's kind of general usage and three and a half hours GPS training in there with some other non-GPS training as well. Probably another sort of two or three hours of non-GPS training. So with the art, basically with the optical heart rate firing all the time. So a two hour run in max accuracy mode. So that's kind of the highest kind of battery draining setting in terms of the GPS. I wasn't using music or anything like that. That cost me 11%. So I guess you're looking at, you know, around about what, that's about 20 hours in terms of overall kind of max accuracy GPS. So that will be enough if those kind of figures scale up to get you through most kind of ultras up to your sort of 100 mile where you're going to take a bit longer than that. But then again, you're probably going to drop the settings down. You don't really necessarily need that max accuracy when you're going that distance. The other thing that I was kind of impressed with was the overnight battery burn was just 1%. So yeah, it's not doing anything crazy. You're not waking up and having lost loads of percent. So that's really always good if you, you know, if you think about you've charged your watch, you want to wear it overnight and then you're getting up to go and run early, do a marathon or something. You don't want to wake up and suddenly see that you've already lost 15% just by being asleep. So that was solid. So in terms of the performance of that new optical heart rate setup, I think on my long slow run, on the heat training, on the hills and the intervals that I did, it performed pretty much beat for beat, anecdotally kind of looking down at my watch with the Garmin Enduro, also with the Apple Watch Ultra. Those things were on par when you dive into the detail as well. I also tested it up against a 400 pound chest strap. And when you dive into the detail, it matched this pretty much on point, particularly over that long two hour run. So pretty good performance there. Uh, need to do a bit more digging though. There were some kind of anomalies, but overall, certainly up against the optical on the Enduro and on the Apple Watch Ultra, which is normally very good. This uh, Phoenix 7 Pro has done a really sort of solid job. The same can be said actually for the GPS accuracy. Overall, on all those runs I've done, the total distance clocked by the different devices that I've tested it against, the Phoenix 7 Pro has always been within kind of a margin for error. So, you know, you often get kind of up to around like a 10% difference in terms of the watch. It depends on where you're wearing them and where, you know, how you start off. All of those kind of things can affect what the end result is, but it was on point. When you dive into the, uh, the maps and the detail and look at those GPS traces close up, again, up against the Apple Watch Ultra, up against the Garmin Enduro, it's it's as close it's bang on i didn't see any kind of strange anomalies from the phoenix 7 pro where you sort of it puts you running through rivers or through buildings from the test that i've done so far that can change i haven't done anything that's particularly kind of troublesome in terms of built up urban areas a lot of mine has been kind of open skyline running along the river so i'll be interested to test that the other thing on the treadmill as well i just thought it was an interesting one it did you know post calibration it did as well as the enduro Again, give or take a little bit, it's pretty much on point. These two devices sort of tended to agree with the tests that I did. So I think that's another, you know, so far so good really. I guess real-time pace is one thing, can be a bit skittish, but that's true of all watches. Yeah, so in the early tests, I think from GPS, battery life and heart rate, there's nothing here that I would say this is a big kind of warning sign. It seems to have performed pretty well and been pretty capable. And that kind of bodes well for the full review that we'll have coming up. So I have really had my Phoenix 7 Pro for a few days compared to the other guys. So I really had to kind of squeeze my runs in. So the first one I did was a treadmill run with the 4965. And then I did a track session with it as well. I was testing the Epix Pro as well. And then I've just done a kind of long hour run with the Phoenix uh, 7 Pro next to the Phoenix 7. So the first thing I'll talk about is design and I mean I've thrown the Phoenix 7 back on and it's very very similar. I know that Garmin talk about this kind of improved display. I'm not sure I can really see it. Maybe it could be a touch brighter but I'm not entirely convinced. Obviously the other kind of big thing here is the flashlight. I mean I haven't run at night so I can't really tell you but it does feel having compared it or kind of remembering what it was like on the 7X it does feel a little bit brighter so I think if you were looking for a brighter version of the LED flashlight on the Phoenix 7X on the Phoenix 7 Pro, then I think that's what you're gonna get here. So into that first run on the treadmill, and what I was really ultimately looking for was how the heart rate would perform, because I mean, that's one of the few things we can really test it. And from that point of view, it's a pretty steady run. I kind of sped it up a little bit at the end of the run, and against the Garmin HRM Pro, chest travel was absolutely fine from a kind of average and max heart rate readings. Now going into that uh, track session, that quicker kind of interval session, I started to see some kind of more familiar things that I've seen from kind of Garmin sensors or just optical sensors in general. And it definitely reported, you know, higher maximum readings for me against the HRM Pro Plus Trap again as well. Kind of distance tracking in general has been fine though. On my hour run, as I said, I had it on with the Phoenix 7 as well. And the kind of things like distance, the kind of average pace, all the kind of things that we'd be looking for 
was absolutely fine. Battery life drop off in multiband mode was about 5% um, as well. So kind of what I'd expect from multiband as well. So from that point of view, all very familiar in terms of the kind of feature you can really test out. Really, it's only been the heart rate monitor, which I don't think is absolutely perfect. It hasn't been for me anyway. Uh, when I've kind of done that high intensity kind of run, the steady runs, it's been absolutely fine. The other features I can't talk about, hill scores, endurance scores, and the mapping features, things like weather overlays, I think it's quite interesting as well. Um, but I think, you know, a bit like some of the other metrics that Garmin has introduced recently, are these going to be ones that are going to really, really um, deliver? And also, you know, the reliance on, on things like training load and heart rate, um, kind of VO2 max, so heart rate based data, you know, based on my performance, you know, my early kind of runs i mean heart rate isn't spotless it's good for steady runs but it looks like it might have some similar issues at least from my point of view and from my kind of early testing so yeah those are kind of my um kind of early run thoughts on you know i say a few runs that i managed to do i kind of squeeze in over a few days um hopefully get a bit more testing in now that we'll be able to get into garmin connect see how that data from things like hill score and endurance score kind of pan out over time Overall, this has been another excellent Phoenix watch to use from Garmin. The fact that they're rolling out the software features to those uh, older Phoenix models does mean that you know this is going to be the be there probably will be some better value in looking at the existing Phoenix Seven range, which has the same battery life, same build, and everything. Like you can lose out on this heart rate sensor, which I think so far looks like it's going to be really good. So I'll be really interested to keep testing that because that will obviously play a big role in people's choice. If you've got a really accurate heart rate sensor on your wrist, then that's fantastic. But so far, it's really felt like using a Phoenix 7X watch, which is what I tested for our review of the Phoenix 7, just with some nice new watch faces and some new scores I've not been able to access yet. But we'll give a much more, um, obviously, thorough conclusion on where it stands against other Garmin watches in our full review. But so far, another great Phoenix. Loads of great Phoenixes now, and the Enduro 2 available. Lots to pick, lots of watches to pick from that have quite similar features. I do like the new heart rate sensor so far on the Phoenix 7 Pro, but we'll see how that shakes up in the long term. My question mark is, you know, we, we haven't been able to test the kind of the hill score or the endurance score on here yet because we haven't had the watches for long enough connected to Garmin Connect. But I'm just wondering what, what this does that's better than the existing devices, which are already very good. You know, do we need a 7 Pro? I, I haven't seen anything yet that makes me think, wow, this is so much better than the Enduro 2 or even better than the Phoenix 7 that we've already seen. So yeah, until we get deeper into it, I, I'm, my feeling is I'm not gonna get a wow moment where I go, actually Garmin needed this watch. It feels like they might be bringing out one too many watches. They're all good, you know, we're not criticizing that, but I feel like maybe, you know, what, what's this for? What, what What's the key point of difference? I'm not really convinced there is one yet. And it, you know, I, yeah, I think, it's getting a little bit confusing in terms of the overall range from Garmin. That'd be my one question, but maybe that'll all play out when we get into the full test and do the full review. Maybe Hill score is going to blow me away, but I'm not 100% confident of that at the moment. Okay, so some initial thoughts on the Garmin Phoenix 7 Pro. Is that, I mean, it, it feels like a very good Phoenix. The thing is here is that in terms of the software features that we've spoken about, those are all going to come to the Garmin Phoenix 7. We know that. We don't know when they're going to come, but they are going to roll back out. So if you look, are looking at those software features that we've spoken about, like the sound of them, if you already have the Phoenix 7, then maybe there's not a reason to massively upgrade here. I think the key things you're going to be looking at here on the Pro is that kind of upgraded optical heart rate sensor. If you care about the LED flashlight, then you now have that on all models as well. And ultimately, everything else is pretty much the same in terms of what you're getting here. There maybe is a promised improvement in terms of the display on the Phoenix 7 um, Pro. I can't say I've noticed massively. Maybe it's a little bit more sharper, um, but I don't think you're going to get massive. You know, in terms of the benefits you get from a, a you know, memory and pixel display, a transvective display, I don't think you're going to get massive benefits over the, the Phoenix 7 display you already have, and it's pretty good on that front. So from that point of view, I think... You're probably not going to miss out on a huge amount. Okay, so there have it. Some initial thoughts from the team on the Garmin Phoenix 7 Pro series. And obviously, as we mentioned, we've not had access to Garmin Connect, which really will enable us to see whether those software features really warrant upgrading from previous Phoenix watches. Now that this watch is live and official, we will have access. It'll take us a few weeks to get through that testing and really get a sense of how those software features work. But when we've got through that, we will give you our full multi-tester review. In the meantime, if you've got any questions, let us know in the comments. As always, like and subscribe, hit that little bell to find out our latest videos, and yeah, we'll see you for the next run tested video.